Hi, good afternoon. I'm sorry I will be speaking uh, English uh, this afternoon because uh, we are live on Facebook and I'm not sure uh, if we have uh, many people that don't speak Portuguese uh, seeing us. Um, anyway, today is a little bit of a, a difficult day in terms of there's always some things that, uh, that uh, run quite well and others that uh, don't, uh, uh, don't seem to result at the end of the at the end of the day and unfortunately we cannot do uh, everything on our own we need each other and um, and I wasn't able to publish um, the the version of paperback and uh, and of the ebook of the journal uh, yet online on Amazon but I will do it soon but uh, I've prepared a presentation a small presentation just to to give me um, the ideas that I would like to explore uh, with you uh, this evening. This is pretty much a farewell party. <laughs> just, uh, just uh, 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 I wanted to let you know what I what I will be doing from now on. I'm um, I'm leaving Macau and I'm also leaving my profession as a lawyer. So I'm changing a little bit um, uh, my my career and my and my personal life. And uh, so I had to, to introduce Global Awareness, uh, which is the name of the company that I've created and it, that is a Macau company. And I wanted to um, introduce the first two, um, the first two projects or the first two uh, books uh, that uh, belong in a sense to Global Awareness, because Global, uh, Global Awareness is, uh, is actually a company that uh, intends to um, raise awareness, intends to um, to create content uh, that uh, that is uh, mindful, intends to create um, ideas and presentations and uh, and um, and uh, and help other uh, other um, other authors that need to to publish books. Um, they it is intended for uh, to help them in uh, publishing their books as well. So. Uh, a little bit. <laughs> I'm going to start by this, despite the fact that uh, <laughs> it might sound a little bit uh, um, egotistical on on my side, but I think it is important for some of you that don't know me. Um, I, I guess everyone here, uh, <laughs> what, one or two, maybe uh, they don't know me that well. But uh, uh, I would like to know that I'm. I would like to tell you that I'm a proud mother of two amazing boys. Uh, I have uh, an MBA, uh, law degree, uh, spiritual life coach certification. Uh, I'm a registered. Uh, I'm, I'm registered as a lawyer in Portugal, in Macau and Timor Leste. I have founded or co-founded uh, Macau Love Nest, Macau IT Clinic, and now Global Awareness Enterprise Limited. And uh, some of you maybe know me uh, for selling products such as essential oils, others like th uh, furniture and th stuff for the house. And so pretty much I've done a lot of different things in my life. And, um, and the reason why I'm telling you this is because independently of this looks very nice on a paper, on a piece of paper. It's, I, I spend a lot of time trying to uh, actually uh, build my resume, build my, uh, my curriculum in a, in a sense that I, f that I felt worth showing it to someone. So I'm, I'm quite proud of this, but at the same time, I think I'm much more than this and we are all much more than this and we are much more than ego. And that's the reason uh, why global awareness for me is such an important project and something that I would like to share with you today. So, um, so I want to get out of my ego <laughs> and uh, and uh, let you know that uh, global awareness is like my values and my belief system in the form of a company, uh, because I do believe that we are all special and unique beings destined for greatness. Uh, and I believe that everyone can change the outcome of their lives, provided that they do the work required. Um, I believe that having the right mind mindset to, to be positive and to have some tools and routines to help along the way is of paramount importance. And that's the reason why I've created the Experiencer Journal, because it's like my method after reading and researching and doing a bunch of different things. I've been... Everyone that knows me since I 
arrived here, they know that I do lists for everything, that I do goals, that I write my goals down. And it, this is something that I've been studying for many years, goal setting, time management. I gave a course on um, time management uh, for, I don't know, five or six years ago. And uh, I have been continuously studying this, uh, this subject. And um, the result of those studies is what I think we can find in the, the experiencer, which I will show you because it's ready and I have it here to show you how, to, how, how it works and, uh, and what is uh, destined to do and how, how it will help us. Um, so this is pretty much the, um, like my belief system and the reason why I, I decided to incorporate global awareness. Um, and I don't know, oh, this is working, okay. So now I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, the name, why the experiencer. Uh, so the, the, the title is The Experiencer, How to Free Your Mind from Worries. And some of you might think, oh, this is a mistake because the experiencer word does not actually exist in, in English. It's something that it's starting to appear in some... Uh, in some posts, if you if you if you have a look in the in the internet, but uh, but it's not a very common word. Word, but like in Portuguese, we would say like the person who who would experience something would be the experiencer. Like if we translate it into English, and I thought it made all the sense because this is the reason behind uh, the book. Because I don't know if I have explained you already, but I've. The book that is uh, that is available for um, for pre um, sale on Amazon is um, I finished it in the end of uh, 2018, but um, it's being it's being reviewed. But the 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 name came from that process and from this uh, this first um, this first first book that I've created, um, and it it means just to to explain you that uh, we are the experiencer of uh, of life. So life is not more than the sum of our experiences, uh, and that we are here to learn and increase our level of awareness. And uh, um, uh, we have a lot to gain if we learn how to be mindful and live a simpler a simple life. This is some some of the things that I've been learning and experiencing and playing with uh, it's something that uh, that uh, uh, has had a huge impact on my personal life and that's why i'm sharing it i've been reading and researching and studying a lot in the last years and um i've been picking up uh, some cues and some tips on several different books and i've uh, in the end of this presentation some of the books that uh, that really changed my uh, perspective on life uh, i will be i will be um, telling you a little bit about that um, but uh, this is mostly the, the the reasons behind why i call it the experiencer why i've uh, why i've named named it this way so uh, i've realized that we cannot bring back time so it doesn't it doesn't make sense that we keep reviving experiences and say, oh, I, I'm, I feel regret about something that happened like 10 years ago or five years ago. It doesn't make any sense. We cannot come back. We just need to learn the lesson and move on. And, uh, and I do believe that uh, uh, some people suffering uh, from, uh, from depression would, if they start doing and, and uh, doing exercises to, to try to release this pressure about their past will we'll gain uh, a lot of uh, quality of life in the process. So um, I do, uh, I, I'm, I'm inclined to believe that what is in the past should be released and let go of just like, well, it passed, we can't do anything about it, so we might as well leave it, uh, leave it there. Um, I've realized also that we actually need much less than we actually think we need. And this is uh, a very powerful realization uh, in the sense that um, I spent the last 12 years of my life uh, trying to find a number. The number that, uh, a number, a financial number like how much do I need to have in my bank account? How much do I need to make in order to be able to to be happy and to and to leave Macau and to and to to actually uh, start living a better life. And with the years, the number kept kept rising and rising and rising because our 
uh, the, the things that we start doing it each each year that we we are raising um, the 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 standard the quality of uh, of our lives we travel more we travel to more expensive places we stay in nicer hotels and we keep like adding and adding and adding and then we are we are always lost and we don't know the number that allow us to actually um, leave leave Macau leave uh, uh, do something better start living a, a more a healthier and more fulfilling life and and this realization that I actually didn't have a number that I I, I didn't need that much that if I that if I was able to uh, lower the standards not the standards of my living but have less things and uh, uh, and better things i would be much more happy because all the things that we have they actually create us uh, create much more problems than they actually solve because uh, uh, everything is energy and uh, uh, so everything is giving us energy and taking energy from us so uh, if we have a cluttered house we will feel uh, much worse than if we have like a pretty clean environment and uh, uh, an empty spaces in which we can uh, freely move around and feel and feel good and feel good about it. So this is uh, this is something that I've been experiencing because as as I've told you in the beginning, I've started after the the law degree and the MBA. I've decided that I didn't know much about myself and that I needed to learn a little bit more about myself, and that's why. I've uh, tried to 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 find a spiritual life coach uh, certification in which um, in which I could learn more about myself and how to how I could help others in the process as well. And so the things that I'm actually telling you are things that I that I that I've been uh, working on in the last years and that I've been um, uh, trying to get rid of and trying to to make exercises and so. What I've created here is uh, is a bunch of things that worked for me and that I've experienced myself and that I've cling to it because I do feel that they work. So I encourage you to try. If you don't think they they work uh, for you, you can always let go, but it's just a perspective. Uh, please feel free to say something. Everyone is so serious. <laughs> I don't know what is going on, but <laughs> is it boring? Okay. Okay. <laughs> So um, the last uh, one is that there is pain. One thing that I've realized and that uh, that also had a huge a huge impact in my life is that there is pain without suffering. We all go through um, <clears throat> a lot of a lot of events in our lives, a lot of circumstances, and uh, some of them cause pain. Some of them. Uh, cause uh, love and feels in in uh, in feelings of joy. Um, what I've uh, realized is that we are the ones creating the suffering around the painful events. This is like the basis. I did. This is not a realization of mine. Of course, this is written in a bunch of books in from uh, uh, from many different uh, people, and this is the basis of of uh, Buddhism and Hinduism and a lot of different uh, um, uh, different uh, spiritual practices or religions uh, is uh, based on this uh, particular uh, concept that if you do certain uh, things, if you can clear your mind, if you can be able to get some room uh, and some headspace, you will be able to have uh, pain without suffering. Because what really, what what I think really uh, uh, that is painful, that is what what we consider to be painful. Um, it's completely different of suffering and uh, a painful event if we see it if we put if if we are just experience experiencing uh, that that event we know that it will go up it it will happen and then it comes down and nothing will uh, it passes it's like the impermanence uh, the rule of impermanence it's like Everything is like a, a, a sea, so you have a wave, everything comes up and then crystallizes and then comes down and everything will be all right. So that's that's how we should be seeing life in order not to cling to what uh, uh, what uh, what make us uh, uh, what make us suffer because if if we cling to it, if we attach 
thoughts and, and sentiments and feelings into a particular experience, we, we, will be, uh, we will be stuck in a moment that already passed. So it's something that we are just creating suffering for ourselves if we keep clinging on those, uh, on those, um, on those thoughts and emotions that a particular experience has brought. We need to just let go, just trust life. Is, is what it is. I can't do anything about it. I cannot do anything about the death of my friend, of our friend, a few, a few weeks ago, which caught us all by surprise, and it, I would love to be able to bring him back. I can't. So, this is... Uh, I'm not saying that I'm not in pain. Of course I am. I'm, I know that many of you are as well. Um, but this shows us how unco uncontrollable life is. And uh, uh, this, this makes us understand that we need to uh, be more present in the now and take control of what uh, the moment that we have right now uh, instead of being concerned about what happened in the past and uh, how that person perceived me or what is going on in a, in a particular uh, person's life. That's not important at all. It's not important for us to foresee. It's important that we design and that we think about what, where we want to go. And, uh, and it's, it's, it's very important that we have an idea of who we are and where we, where we want to go. But we need to be flexible enough to, to see what is coming our way and, uh, and to adapt into the circumstances and, and take the best out of life in each particular moment. For me, this, these were lessons that I've been learning and, uh, and that I wanted to, to, to leave you uh, before I leave Macau. So it's something that, that for me was important to, to, to pass to you. So why do you, not, don't, you don't respond quickly? <laughs> okay, so the book... The one that is going to be launched in Amazon on 7th, so it's already available for purchase, but uh, will be only um, launched on the 7th of, uh, of September, has pretty much these seven chapters. Uh, and then it has three sub-chapters in each of these uh, themes. So um, the idea is I've started like with the macro environment, which is... Uh, life is not under our control, uh, so we have, uh, we are born and then we die, and we don't have any control in the process of when we are born or when, when, uh, when we die. Um, and there are a bunch of things that we don't have control over. So this is pretty much the initial steps of the book and what I what I what I started to to explore in my own uh, uh, introspections and in my own readings. Uh, then we have. The, the, um, the natural unfolding of life. We need to pretty much let go and remove, take, uh, stop micromanaging stuff and people and let the reins go and run free <laughs> and uh, be wild and do something that, uh, uh, because if we are, if we are pretty much uh, determined and with a mindset that, oh, I want to do this and I want to do this independently of whatever circumstances, there, uh, circumstances that might, may arise, um, this usually creates a lot of, um, a lot of uh, restrictions, a lot of, uh, a lot of dangers, a lot of drainers, a lot of things that, uh, that, uh, that usually don't go our way. So we get frustrated and, uh, and, um, and we, we build up fear and, and things don't work out the, the, the way that we were, plan uh, that we were uh, planning. So there is, there is no way we should exert this type of, uh, this type of control in the things that, that are not we we cannot control um for sure so then the restrictions the dangers and the drainers so this in this in this chapter i pretty much uh, uh, explore like technology information what uh, what we have uh the information that is available on the on the internet then that 
pretty much we we are more confused when we are when we start researching a topic than uh, than we get clarity on because for instance there are two examples that cross my mind um, one is the the is the milk is the cow milk if it's healthy or no when I was uh, when I was uh, 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 trying to 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 change the the, the milk uh, for my kids I was like pretty uh, researching all that I could find about <laughs> if, if it was healthy or not to, to pass them into cow milk and what age and everything. And I've read, I don't know how many articles and I got even more confused. We don't know what to trust in this, uh, in this uh, technology uh, um, era. And, uh, and so there's a lot of dangers and uh, th there's a, a lot of information available to us, but we need to be aware and that's the reason why global awareness exists of what to trust and what not to trust. We need to be mindful of what is going on, where to look into the information, how to, uh, how to, to, to interpret, which, uh, where to, to find it, which uh, publications we should actually consider uh, as research, how many studies you need to have before you actually trust an information that is, uh, that is given to you. So all these, uh, dangers and drainers and restrictions we live in a we live in a i think that that we live in an era where we are so so used to instant gratification so we just grab a phone and we call and we have a meal in 20 minutes we grab uh, uh, we grab the phone or the we go to the internet and we have all types of goods available to to us in 24 hours even if less like throughout many, many different uh, platforms. And this creates a lot of danger and that's probably uh, some, of the, uh, some of the problems behind the, what is uh, being called uh, w the characteristics of the, of the millennials. Um, uh, uh, that they are not, they, they don't want to work as hard, they don't want to, uh, because they know that they have so many things available to them uh, that they don't know how to work hard for a particular for a particular thing, but they don't know also how to relate with people because they are used to get everything they want out of the back of a computer or back of a, of a, of a smartphone. So they, they are, I do believe that we are losing the communication skills, the capacity to sit with one another and to look into each other in the eyes and ask, how do you feel? And I think if we, if we ask ourselves that question, how do I feel today? We have trouble actually finding an answer and, and be specific enough to give us an idea of, uh, okay, so I'm feeling this, but why am I feeling this? Sometimes we don't know. I've, I've done this exercise many times myself uh, and, and I, I thought that the conclusion for many years was I don't know myself. I don't know what I stand for. I am, I'm a bunch of experiences. I'm a lawyer. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I've traveled a lot of different countries. I'm, I'm, I have a lot of different friends, I've, but I didn't know who I am. I didn't know who I've, who, who, who I stand for. What were my values and the things that I, independently of whatever happened, I wouldn't, uh, um, I, I would be strict and, and, and I would, uh, I would cope with them. So it's, it's, it was very, very important. Uh, for me to to make these questions and to realize uh, and to try to 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 put words and emotions and everything to get to know um, uh, my myself and to be able to know what we are we, I do believe that television and uh, and uh, all the communication is is trying to all the means of communication are trying to program uh, our minds into not thinking or to think in a particular manner and uh, and this will lead us away from what is required from us which is to gain awareness to gain consciousness we are being programmed uh, uh, to do whatever the 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 industries want us to do even we can talk about the pharmaceutical pro, uh, products. We can talk about even essential oils or whatever, whatever is the the, the industry wellness. Uh, uh, we we have examples in all these in all these industries. But uh, uh, the fact is that we need to to be aware in order to make the right choices. And for that, we need to look inside. That's what I 
that's what I found, and that's 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 the reason of all of this, and the reason why I'm here today, um, to show you that. Then uh, another thing that I that I did. Uh, that I've been doing uh, was researching about the brain. I think like 90% of the persons in the room, probably lawyers, or at least in uh, they, they took a law degree or, or something like that, with a few exceptions. But um, we don't know how our brain works, and it, this this is uh, there's of course a lot of um, a lot of uh, research and development that is that is that has been. Um, conducted in the last few years and we are always learning more about the brain but knowing a little bit about how our brain works and how the conscious and the unconscious and the intellect work make a lot of difference in the process of how we cope with life and how we well, how we live our lives and how we start appreciating um, the small things. That's pretty much what I've uh, I've I've been reading a lot of books about uh, um, about the brain and uh, and um, and it's it's a fascinating subject and and I do believe that not only neurosurgeons or um, uh, every every everyone should know the basics in order to be able to 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 go through life. <laughs> Uh, in a in a in an actual uh, in a more balanced uh, way, uh, I, I do think that schools should teach this kind of this kind of matters to the kids from early age, uh, so that they would be able to to cope with their emotions. I, I think it's very important. It's it's a very important subject. So the brain, the heart, and who we are, because we are human beings. So we are being, we are something much bigger than we think we are. We are much more than a physical body. We are made to be great and, and we are all full of fears. And that's what doesn't allow us to stand out and to be happy and to feel like stuck uh, one way or another. I think there's a lot of people that feel frightened uh, uh, and they don't know why they feel uh, why they feel frightened about a particular about a particular course about a particular a particular subject. They they know that they are not okay, but they don't try to to find uh, what is wrong and how they should uh, move ahead and go uh, and start living a different type of life. So this is uh, this is definitely uh, something important that I that I also um, talk in the book. Uh, so these are the themes that are being revised and that, that uh, will be in the book that will be launched uh, on the 7th of September. Um, and then I wanted to show you... Oh, I can... I don't know. Well, this is the last part, so I want to just change the... Just change the presentation in order to show you uh, sorry to show you the actual journal uh, the way that I've that I've designed it oh. okay so this is the black and white version which will be the the paperback this can be used in several different uh, platforms. I use mine on my iPad with uh, my Apple Pencil. So I do this every day and I have been using it for over a year, over one year. And, uh, and I do believe it has a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, uh, impact in how to live a happier and a more blissful uh, life. So let me see if I, okay. So, the first the first page of this journal is pretty much a self assessment which should be repeated each month so we look into the diverse areas that we have our career our education our family our financial condition the community our physical uh, health socially and spiritually where we are at so we give pretty much 
uh, a grade to ourselves. It is a self-assessment. There is no wrong or right. There is no. Uh, it's not what your family think you should be at. It's what what you actually feel you should be at. And this is a very important tool in the sense that this is what allows you to write your goals to start thinking what is your number 10? What is your goal in each particular uh, section that you would like to achieve? So it is, uh, it is definitely an important uh, exercise that I do uh, each month and um, I do it with different colors. So I, put, I use pink and put here a pink and, and, um, and decide where I am. And after I do this exercise, I decide, okay, so my uh, weakest link is my education, for instance. So what am I going to do for my education to reach a higher level? And I decide on my goal. So that's important because of... This is very... You cannot see very well, but uh, uh, pretty much this is a bucket list that exists um, on... Uh, on the beginning of each month, so it's like a monthly list in which you write down what you want to do less, what you want to create, what you want to prioritize, what you want to organize, what you want to simplify, what you want to let go, what you want to release, improve, learn, become, eliminate, delegate, everything that whatever comes to your mind, you write it down and the idea is that you have a clear picture of the things that you would like to to work on that month and be better at. Um, then, uh, this monthly tracker is what I wanted to show you in in terms of the the self well, of the um, of the self assessment we made. So we elaborate on a sp one specific goal we would like to achieve each month. So we decide in the beginning of the month, okay, so I'm going to work this month on my weight. <laughs> well, this is something that is always on my to-do list, so <laughs> that's what came to mind. Uh, so I want to lose two kilos this month, and to do that, I will... Um, why? <laughs> so this will be my end goal like lose two kilos or three kilos. And then I list the steps to achieve the goal. So I need to eat more vegetables. I need to eat, I need to eat less carbs. I cannot eat chocolate, whatever it is. Of course, this works for any type of activity, any type of goal, but it's very important to be specific and to list all the steps because the end goal if we don't, uh, it is proven and there's a different productivity um, and, uh, and goal setting experts uh, that, uh, that refer to the fact that you need to, how do you, how do you actually eat an elephant? And you need to, to slice it and eat it piece by, uh, piece, by piece. So uh, just like a pizza or whatever. So you, you, do, you do need to segregate and to learn how to separate each of the tasks that that are required for you to your end goal. So um, and uh, here you can list pretty much the the, the ideas that uh, that will take you in the right direction, and then a completion date for your goal, which usually for me is the end of the month. So I'll be working on one goal each of the month. So and so these two exercises is something that we do once a month. This is the major page and something that I do every day for at least the last year. I didn't miss one day because I, I do feel that it makes a, a, an incredible difference in my, in my day, in, in how I cope and how I, how, how I work throughout my day. So this is the result of a lot of study and, uh, and uh, the Pretty much the, the basic stuff I need to say, it comes from Mel Robbins and her productivity. She has also a kind of a journal that, uh, that, that is uh, the five second journal. And she has something very similar to this. So this, this idea was pretty much 
uh, stolen from from Mel Robbins, but I, I, I can't I can't say that I've stolen because this is something that we all have in our <laughs> in our um, uh, uh, in our dashboards in our cars. So uh, what um, it is an energy tank. So the first thing I do when I wake up is. I date this, I know which day is it, and I, I ask myself, how is my energy tank? How do I feel? Do I feel fine? Do I feel low? Do I feel dep depleted? Why do I feel like that? Why didn't I sleep properly? Whatever, but I assess and I put like some kind of um, circle in one of those, uh, in one of those areas. And, um, and then I decide or I, I think about what should I do to increase my energy um, and, and I write it down here. So I must tell you that like in these, the last 365 days, I was uh, always in fine and good. <laughs> uh, I've never been in energized. I never felt like my tank was pretty full, but I've never been low or depleted, which is something that is pretty awesome in my opinion, because there's so many, uh, so many days that we go up and we feel, oh no, I, 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 when, I, when I come out of the bed, I feel grateful and I, I do think that I'm fine, I'm alive. And that's the least, uh, that's the, 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 the least sense and the least sentiment that I have is to be fine. So uh, at least what, um, what I can do to increase my energy. And this is a very crucial thing. It's like, I will be using my energy where, when I decide that I don't, I do this before I look into my phone. I'm not going to see my emails before I do this. I decide what is important for me before I check my emails, before I check my messages, before I check my WhatsApp. George, this is for you. Are you paying attention? <laughs> this is mostly for you. Um, I don't, I don't uh, look into, um, into WhatsApps, message. I don't touch my phone until I finish this uh, exercise and a few others, but uh, this exercise particularly, uh, because I want to be intentional about my day. I don't want someone else. I don't want my boss to decide what I'm going to, to do in my life, independently of the fact that I do need to, uh, and he knows that I do my work in time, so I'm pretty, I'm pretty uh, comfortable with, uh, with uh, talking about this, uh, this issue. Of course, it's important, the urgencies, of course, it's important to, uh, to answer our clients on time. Uh, all of this is, is of paramount importance, but we cannot forget ourselves and what is important to us. If we start on the sense of urgency each day, we are not going to do anything that is aligned with our goals, with our values, with what we are here to do. So this is, this is one of the things that, that uh, really uh, made a big difference in, in my life. I decide, okay, so today I want to, my top project is my kids. I'm going to have two hours of dedicated attention at lunch and at dinner with them, for instance. It might be as simple as this, but to be fully present with them. It's something that it's of paramount importance and we don't do it because we are full of all our work and all everything that is in our mind and we cannot uh, have the head space to be fully present with them. So it might be, oh, I want to finish a chapter of the book that I'm reading and I love it, but I don't have time. Uh, it might be like very simple things, but that are important to you and to each, to each one of us. So it, for me, it has a huge impact. Another thing that has a huge impact is writing five different things that I'm grateful for each day. It is proven, there's a lot of, a bunch of studies supporting this, uh, so this is quite uh, scientific uh, in that sense. Um, that gratitude, that listing what we are grateful for, dissolves or at least diminishes our fears. So it's like seeing the, the glass half full or half empty. It's very important that we shift our perspective and we start to feel grateful for all the things that are uh, really important for us and that make us feel happy. And 
if once we do that, we start noticing a bunch of other things that uh, are important to, uh, that are important for us and that make us feel grateful as well. What I what I felt in the beginning when I started doing this, it was very difficult exercise. It seems like very easy. Okay, let's list, and I always did the same thing. Oh, my kids, my parents, my pets, my whatever, and you write down everything the same, and then you raise your awareness. So we come up again to awareness. We start noticing the small things. That person that smiled to me, the 40 persons that appeared in this room to listen to me, the fact that I've received a message that was sweet and kind for someone else, uh, the fact that I have a beautiful lunch and a helper at home to help me cook it, and that it's, it made a huge impact because it's, it's not because you have to do the exercise that you go and look for this, but in a sense it is. You know that you need to be aware of this uh, and you, you need to start seeing life in a, in, a, in, a, um, in a different manner and start looking into the simpler things. Uh, like my son smiled when he asked for that, some joke that my kid said. There's, all of this is something, the support of people that you don't even know. There's a bunch of things that I now list and it was very difficult for me at first, but then when I got the hand of it, it's, it, is, it is working great and it gives me every day more um, ideas and more, and more situations to feel grateful for. Uh, finally, in, no, not finally, because I have finally in this page, but there is something very important uh, here as well. Uh, so, what is on your mind? This is called a brain dump. I don't know if you have heard of this term, but there's a bunch of people also uh, talking, about this, uh, talking about this concept. Uh, uh, again, this is based on the research. Whenever you write down something that you, you are worried about, it loses the impact. It loses the, the, the actual feeling that you have so it it uh, you can have the distance you you can distance yourself uh, and you can observe what is bothering you uh, in your piece of paper so it's pretty much when you write down whatever is in my mind oh i need to pack my bags because i'm leaving on sunday i need to i need to 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 go and say bye bye to a b c d and e i need to uh, pick up whatever uh, and buy something else and it's all this all this stuff i write it down and when i write it down i look at it and i say okay this is important this is not important if it is important i will put it in my agenda for the day if it's not important it will stay there but it, it doesn't occupy my headspace and that's pretty important for me because then i can focus on what really matters and let go of everything that is occupying space but doesn't matter or at least doesn't matter today because there are many things that matter but can be done tomorrow can be done the other day and uh, and so this is a very a very important aspect i don't know what time is it and what time am i speaking but probably i'm speaking for too long <laughs> um okay so Anyway, I don't want to, to, to waste much of your time, and, uh, uh, but this is an important <laughs> thing to, to, to do, which is decide what time I will stop working at. For workaholics, and I was <laughs> a workaholic, and I have been, I have like some kind of obsessive compulsive behaviors. Uh, so it's uh, everything that I do, I like to do it in, uh, in very extreme cases. So it's, it's something, uh, work or whatever it is, I usually uh, do a lot of it. And, uh, and so I need to, to determine that I need to have balance and that I need to stop working at a particular time. And I follow this like scrupulously. I put in my, I put in my, um, in my phone, that at 6.30 or at 6.45 or at 7, I will be leaving the office and I will be leaving the office. I may, I may have to work at home when I put the kids down or whatever. I might have to respond to some emails and my boss knows that I do. So uh, the, um, the thing is, you need to decide. You cannot let someone else decide 
what time are you going to leave your work? What time are they managing? What, what are they going to do with your life? It's your life. So you are the one to in control. You are the one that decides that. And that's the part, the controllable part of life. There's a lot of uncontrollable aspects and the, the ma macro aspects. Um, but there's also a lot of things that we can control. And this is what gives us control. Uh, or what gives me control? <laughs> I do believe that it's it, that uh, that it gives control to uh, many people. So the this is the the basic pages of the journal. Then it has like 30 pages or 31 or 28 or 29 uh, independently of the month. And in the end of this daily, so it has one page for each day of the month. And then in the end of the month, it has a review process of the month which was what I was trying to find to show you because this is like the last page of this journal that's really, that is important. Okay, so this is the monthly review. So here we list our accomplishments throughout the, throughout the month. We list the toughest lessons learned, the goals not accomplished and why we think we haven't accomplished them. Um, the things that we want to improve next month and rituals that we would like to maintain, habits to eliminate and things to focus on. And then we start a brand new month. So this is pretty much the journal. Uh, there will be two versions of this journal, both in ebook and in PDF. If I use mine as I was, I took this out to show you. Um, I use mine in an, an application called uh, Good Notes. So I write down, I write down, this was today's, uh, actually it has a very good <laughs> um, uh, typing compared to what I've, handwriting compared to what I usually have. But uh, this is pretty much my assessment of, um, of, so I said that I was going to stop working at 8, so this means that I don't have much time <laughs> left. Uh, anyway, I will need to be out of this place at 8. And uh, of course, my top project today is book and journal presentation. That was what was on my mind throughout all the day. And um, I, I've listed, for instance, to increase my energy that I had like my workout pro, uh, uh, program and eating mindful and a lot of different other stuff that is going on on my, on my mind, of course. But this is how I use it. So I write down with my pen uh, here. But so you can have a PDF and, and uh, use it on your iPad. You can have an actual printing book, like booklet, and you can write it down with a old style uh, version. Um, and uh, so there's a bunch of different options. And there is one that starts on June, and there is one that is going to start in January and, and, de and December. That's why there are two versions. Uh, one June to December, one January to December, and each of the versions as ebook version and paperback version. So that's pretty much it. And the only thing that I have left to tell you is the books that led me to the conclusions and to the things that I've been telling you. So I'm going back to the presentation to show you just that. So, books that transform my life, helping me free my mind from worries, <laughs> the subtitle of the book. Uh, I think I've read this, I don't know, 10 years ago, but it still is a big influence. Um, I've read this and I've read First Things First, and uh, I, I, I guess I pretty much, when I like a, 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 an author and I do think that they have something to learn, I do tend to read all the books that he has uh, written and all the, the things that he, that he has done. But uh, this is a very, a very important uh, book uh, uh, in terms of, uh, of productivity. Uh, so this is a little bit, <laughs> as you see, I have many different uh, uh, styles of reading. I read pretty much nonfiction. It's, I, I, don't, I don't enjoy too much romances and that kind of uh, literature. Uh, I do like 
books that uh, teach me something. Uh, and uh, this, this was, for instance, a book that taught me a lot of how our subconscious mind uh, is, uh, is actually um, guiding our conscious mind most of the times and we don't even realize it. And this is a very, very powerful book that I do recommend everyone to read it. Um, it's by Joseph Murphy. See You at the Top by Zig Ziglar is one of the best inspirational talks or reads that you can uh, that you can um, read. Find Your Why by C uh, Simon Sinek is also a very powerful um, book to help you and to give you the tools to find what moves you, what are your values, what is your mission, what is the how you want to 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 what you want to be doing uh, throughout your life what are your uh, capabilities and your uh, your capacity uh, another very important book of, uh, that i've read a uh, couple of months back was the book of joy by dalai lama and desmond tutu or, or it should i should have called his holiness and and <laughs> archbishop uh, desmond tutu but Anyway, I'm sorry <laughs> for their for their holiness, and uh, um, but uh, it was a very important book and something that uh, there's a lot of lessons in terms of how to live a more aligned life. Um, also, Buddha's Brain by Rick Hansen was a very powerful book. The Antithers, uh, The Antither Soul by Michael A. Singer, uh, and a couple of more to finish if this will be changed. Okay, The Power of Now, Eckhart Tolle is, is definitely an inspiration for me in New Earth and The Power of Now. Uh, the Science of Enlightenment by Shinzen Young, Atomic Habits by James Clear, The Heart of Buddhist Teaching by Thich Nhat Tam, Ham, uh, Hardwire for Happiness by Rick Hansen, and Awaken the Giant by Tony Robbins. There's a lot of, as you see, there's a lot of business books mixed with spiritual books, which is kind of <laughs> strange, but at the same time, I'm pretty much business and I'm pretty much human, so uh, I, I do think that the spirituality that I've been uh, uh, tapping into uh, is very important also in my business career, not, not only in my personal life. I, I do believe that everything is intrinsically uh, related and in that sense it is, um, it is very important that we, uh, that we realize that and that we find uh, a way to align uh, both realities, uh, because if we are not happy on our on a personal level, we will not be happy at work. If we are not happy at work, we will not be happy on a personal level. I'm pretty sure of this, and I've 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 seen this uh, uh, happening around me many times, and so I'm I'm pretty sure that everything is intertwined. And I, I was I was pretty afraid of showing this uh, nature of mind, this spiritual, uh, this spiritual awareness or this, uh, uh, this um, the thing, for instance, to say that I like to, to, to meditate or to do yoga or to, or to do this type of uh, practices um, to my friends or to my colleagues or to my clients was somehow a little bit strange for me because well, I, I, I thought that they were, they were going to interpret that I was crazy or that I was... Uh, but I do think that those things ground me and that they help me and they are also part of who I am. So I don't have to hide them from anyone. It's who I am. I don't care if you like it or not. If you like it, if, it's, if, if you think that we have some kind of common ground, that's great. If you don't, well, that's great as well. So I don't, uh, that's, I'm not going to cling to your impression of that. Um, uh, but I do know who I am now and that's, that's very refreshing for me at least. <laughs> uh, so that's what I wanted to show you and to, to leave you before leaving Macau. Chegou, obrigada. Obrigada. Isto não passa. <risos> ah, faltava uma frase, pois era. Uh, havia aqui só mais uma frasinha. Queria deixar os meus contactos também. Uh, I wanted to leave my... I have, a, I have a blog, I have a, a website which is ritandoring.com. I'm also building 
globalawarenesssolutions.com uh, website. I have an email which is rita at globalawarenesssolutions.com. Uh, and my LinkedIn and Instagram, I, I'm, I'm trying to share also some productivity tips and some, uh, and some uh, ideas about how to live a more balanced life on those, uh, on those platforms. So I would like to finish with this quote, which is, in history as in human life, regret does not bring back a lost moment and a thousand years will not recover something lost in a single hour. Stefan Zweig, thanks for watching. <laughs> Thank you. Ashinku, Sinki Maya.